whatever you've done to her. Who am I that I could change even so much as another thought, Doctor? Oh, don't give me that mumbo-jumbo. Andrea, call an ambulance, please. Now. She's dying. Or didn't you notice that? I sensed she would be leaving us soon. You sensed that, did you? Don't imagine you're going to get away with this, Dervra. Because if it's the last thing I do, somebody out there is going to put a stop to you once and for all. Something must be wrong. It's a bubble that's gonna break. It's Murphy's Law. You're the only luck I need, and that's for sure. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. for it, didn't you, doll? I knew you'd show up sooner or later. Some deduction. I live here. Oh, no, you don't. I live here. You live over there. Or so you tell me whenever I try and cross the bamboo curtain. It's not bamboo. It's wool. And good fences make good roommates. Then to what do I owe the surprise attack? Don't tell me it's Pearl Harbor Day already. If I say it's for rent, I'm a nag. If you say it's for groceries, you're in debt. If I say anything else, I know I'll regret it. Then say you'll be mine tonight and we'll forget the whole ugly incident. That's not in your lease. Neither is lifting my wallet, so why don't we both put our hands where they don't belong, huh? What do you say? And on another note... Come on, Murph. You know, if it was meant to happen, the phone wouldn't be ringing. Say it ain't so, Joe. Tell me they have that in the life to come, and I'll build a church with my bare hands. It's your boss. He wants to talk with you. After what he just did? Well, nerve of that guy. Tell him I'm on the way out. He said he's got a job. Then send him my congratulations. It's about time he stopped hiding behind that insurance company and started working for a living. Murph. Murph. Murph, wait up. Well, this is a dank little corner of the night, all right. Dare I ask what we're doing here? I'm trying to figure if somebody in that window up there could maybe see across into there. What do you think? That I asked you the wrong question or followed you one time too many. You could have stayed home and had a nice chat with Wes. You know, if he's got a case for you, you can't go on ducking it forever. Yeah, I know. But insurance fraud, I mean, it sounds so cheesy. Hey, hey, cheesy is as cheesy does. I mean, look at some of the things I have to do. Listen, if this is about transcribing tapes for me. No, 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 no. It's about being Morgan's Power Tools calendar girl for the third year in a row. So I'm not Cheryl Teagues. Believe me, Kimmy, she's got nothing on you, even when you got nothing on. No, the point is, we all do what it takes, and you got a gift, Murph. I just want to see you make the most of it. And ensure I pony up enough dinero to keep you from losing the lease on our digs. So I have a practical side. What is that, criminal? Speaking of which, have you told your mother about me yet? 
Yeah, she thinks having a man for a roommate is safer. But then, of course, I haven't told her about your fixation with the dark alleys. And wouldn't you know, this place would be closed. Oh, so much for chutney with breakfast, if that's what this is about. Could be there's somebody living in the back. Yo, anybody home? So, Murph, how long can we get for breaking and entering? Amp's great. So, what did old Wes have to say for himself anyway? Is that coffee I smell? Aftershave, but it's drinkable. Ooh, breakfast beverage and skin conditioner, huh? Now if I could only make it low calorie. I think you stand a better chance with waterless flowers. Oh, you saw those, did you? Yes, Murphy, if it's the thought that counts, you scored a few points. You remember that for our next fight, will you? Well, speaking of which, I didn't want to uh, press the point last night, but I told Wes you'd meet him downtown this morning. Oh, did you now? And when, pray tell, am I supposed to be there? An hour ago. I'd better go throw something on. Try a trench coat. Better yet, two trench coats. There's a last and a half for you. Miss Finucci, sorry to intrude so early, though. It's always nice to see you. Same here, Wes. Tough case this time? Oh, from where I sit, they're all tough. What a guy. So tell me, who's trying to get away with doing what to whom? Well, there's this woman, or... There was this one. That, Wesley Harden, is confidential information belonging to the First Fidelity Insurance Company. And I, for one, would not hesitate to rat on you to the company brass for divulging such material to a mere civilian. You were supposed to be in my office one hour ago. Wes, the poor girl can barely speak the language. How do you expect her to handle a message like that, or me to remember it, for that matter? Nice threads, Murph. What's the occasion? We had an appointment. Daedalus Patrick Murphy. I'd love to, Wes, but I already got an appointment today, and I'm pushing my limit with that. Miss Finucci, will you please remind him that I'm the one that signs his checks on a bi-weekly basis? That doesn't seem to fly for him in any language. Okay, Wes, if you want to play hardball, I'll let you take me out to breakfast, but that's as far as it goes. And you can stop talking at my roommate there. She's got a crazy Italian father, and I hate to find you floating in the bay one day because of it. Be seeing you, Wes. Uh, and if you call that a trench coat, then I can't wait to see you in a pair of shorts. Wait, wait, wait. Your best jacket, the appointment. Today's the day, isn't it? I don't know what you're talking about, Doll. Good luck. I thought you were on the wagon for good this time. Was, am, and God willing, always will be. So how come we're having breakfast in a bar? Where else are you going to find this kind of ambiance with nuts? Besides, they do a soft-boiled egg you won't believe. Yo, Kevin, how about some yellow bellies for me and my friend here? The insured was a Mrs. Cynthia Medford. You're not going to ruin a perfectly decent breakfast with shop talk now, are you? She was 57 years old, and the cause of death was determined to be congestive heart failure. It happens, so pay the $2 for a change. The figure is more like $2 million. The original beneficiary was a medical institute, but six months ago, this Medford woman up and gets married and leaves the pot of gold to the new husband. And you figure, first he popped the question, and then he popped the little missus to live happily ever after on Fidelity's funds. The thought has crossed my mind. So why come to me? You got an office full of crack investigators. Because none of them has ever heard of someone being induced with congestive heart failure. And I have? Come on, Wes. Somebody pulls a scam like this, they spent months, maybe years, figuring the angles. So what sort of a chance am I going to have against all that? Actually.
actuarially none. <laughs> but the fact remains of all my people, you have the annoying habit of almost always getting results. Well, it's not because I'm trying to. Maybe that's why it's so annoying. Just goes to show how success can ruin a man, huh? Whatever it is you use to crack these characters, Murphy, it's about time for you to do it. I hate the matrimony one. So many shattered illusions. I'll call you in a day or two to check on your progress. The call Fanucci. I hate to be interrupted when I'm avoiding work. While we're on the subject, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Yes. But if it'll get you out of my hair, I'm gay. I know you and Miss Fanucci are roommates, but are you and she... I mean, do you two ever... Find ourselves face to face on a single pillow doing the dance of dances? In a word, yes. In a word, once. Once? Once. And? And I was too drunk at the time to remember it. Oh, no. Reason enough to swear off the source for good, wouldn't you say? Oh, that hurts. Not as much as waiting for the next dancing lesson. When's that supposed to happen? When I'm centered, she says, whatever the hell that is. But I got a feeling staying sober is a big piece of it. I really feel for you, Murph. Enough to take back this file? No can do. But if you want to hear about my love life, please, the food's coming. Mr. Murphy is here, Judge. You're looking good, man. Save the blarney for the judge, Murph. As both Mrs. Danforth's husband and her attorney in this hearing, I really must request that you direct any future questions to me, Mr. Murphy. Is that understood? Yeah, sure. Good. Now, as to Mr. Murphy's appeal for visitation rights to the child, Kathleen Murphy Danforth, age 10, I'll hear arguments. Your Honor, the child in question was the unplanned result of a whirlwind affair and subsequent marriage between Mr. Murphy and the former Miss Marissa Fisk Carlton here. Needless to say, the marriage was annulled, after which Mr. Murphy simply abandoned the situation, not attending the birth or even bothering to inquire as to the well-being of the mother of the child. She moved to Switzerland without even telling me she was pregnant, Your Honor. Have you appealed for visitation rights before, Mr. Murphy? For eight years now, I've been appealing to anyone who would listen, and even more who wouldn't. Mr. Murphy has a history of alcoholism, bankruptcy, uncertain employment, and unstable relationships. Come off it, Charlie. I've worked steady for the same insurance company for more than three years now, and I've been in AA solid for eight months without so much as a beer. She's my child, and I want to see her. Your Honor, the child was never told of Mr. Murphy's existence. I have reports here from several prominent psychiatrists stating that severe trauma could result were she to learn of a mysterious father at this time. So call me an uncle, a second cousin twice removed. I just want to see her, take her to the park once in a while, anything. And then, of course, Your Honor, there is the matter of Mr. Murphy's current liaison with a pinup girl. She is not a pinup girl. She's a model and a damn good one. This empty courtroom is boring. Couldn't I wait for you guys in the lobby or something? Katie, you're interrupting us. Kathleen Danforth, you will go back and sit down this instant until your father and I have finished. Is that clear? Kathleen. Yes, ma'am. She's got my eyes. She has nothing of the sort. Hate me till the river rises if you have to, Mayor, but for the love of Mike, the child's my own flesh and blood. And that's as much of you as she is ever going to have. Underline ever. Uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, I'm not the begging type. Yes, well, I think I've heard enough to take the matter into consideration. Couldn't have been all bad between us. Could it, Mayor? She's a real beaut, she is. Yes? D.P. Murphy, First Fidelity Insurance. Our condolences on the recent passing of Mrs. Medford, but if I could have a word or two with Mr. Medford, well, it'd just speed things up with the paperwork. Oh, no, Mr. Medford died more than 15 years ago. Well, there's a headline for you. According to our records, they've only been married for the last six months. Oh, now I understand. You must mean Derva. I must, must I? 
Please, come in. Christmas this year, eh, Mr. Uh... Derva? No mister is needed. Well, just for the files, is that something comma Derva or Derva comma something? Just Derva. I'm easy. Derva it is. Say, this looks like the New York City subway system. The set was a tribute Miss Medford erected to her grandfather, who helped design the real underground system there. But such detail. I mean, you got your graffiti on the cars, you got your dirty station, you even got little muggers mugging someone. To seek quiet here is to know the city and yet transcend it. Great town, New York. I, I spent a night on the subway there once myself. You've come for some purpose, Mr. Murphy, comma, DP, First Fidelity Insurance. And this is just to get the routine whys and wherefores before the company forks over the proceeds from Mrs. Medford's policy. Tough thing, a hard going just like that, huh? Death comes to all of us in this life, Mr. Murphy. But I was not aware that Cynthia had made provisions for any such insurance. A couple of million tokens worth, from what they tell me. And if... You're the husband, the dough's yours now. It should not be. The marriage was Cynthia's suggestion to assure my citizenship here so that our religious work could continue. So she was just a follower of yours, but the marriage itself? Was celibate, even though we lived here together. If you can understand that. I got it, bud. Believe me, I got it. But you'd still be the uh, beneficiary. <laughs> Almost took out the A-train there, didn't I? But tell me, Derv, had Mrs. Medford been having any health problems that you knew of? She had been ill for some time. I sought to help with breathing exercises and meditation. But she was under a doctor's care as well. You wouldn't happen to have his name on you, would you? Phillips. Alden Phillips. Perhaps he could tell you more. You mean about the illness? To me, it was an imbalance of her chakras. No doubt he knew it by another name. Uh, speaking of which, uh, it, you wouldn't happen to know any shortcuts for a guy to get himself centered, would you? We each have our own path to that place, Mr. Murphy. And it takes as long as it takes. I was afraid it was going to be something like that. Well, thanks a lot, Dur, for your time and the swell train set. Uh, we'll get back to you as soon as the paperwork's finished. Don't get up. Uh, Andrea can show me out. Delicious, Kimmy. Delicious. They're gonna love you. They're gonna love you good. Yeah. Stay with that tool. That tool's all yours. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Looking good, baby. Mmm. Beautiful. 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 Yeah. All right. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot. <laughs> Too Beautiful. Hot. Keep it up. Keep it up, honey. Keep it up. Beautiful. Try saying something like, buzz me, baby, buzz That's me. That's the buzz you're looking for, Manny. I'll give it to you. Look, what the hell do you think you're doing? You swore to me, give me this. It's almost winter. Now, come on. You, you got a half naked in front of the steelworkers. Right. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't need this. Take five, take ten, take twenty, take a hike. Buzz me, baby. What kind of talk is that for a grown-up? You know, as much fun as you always are, Murph, I don't recall inviting you to the session today. Well, maybe you should have. How can you put up with that guy? Because until the top five Asian models ahead of me get fat, I don't have any choice. And put this on, will you? I can't stand for you oh, to get God. sick or have those gorillas mauling you with their eyes. 
Well, your jealousy would be a lot more touching if it wasn't always costing me work. Murph, you're wearing your frog. He took the case. Big mistake. Why? What have you got? Celibate gurus, miniature muggers, and a female insuree who shuffled off from a busted ticker. This one's got disaster written all over it. Well, have you picked up a copy of her autopsy report? No, but if I had an next move, I'm sure that would be it. Personally, I'd rather find out who owns that Indian grocery we found last night. What happened at the hearing this morning? It was this morning, wasn't it? Oh, it went great. Looks like I got the kid three Sundays a month, two weeks in the summer. How about that? They're going to turn you down again, aren't they, Mark? The ex has got all that knob hill muscle behind her. I still got a track record that reads like dog poop. I was really trying this year, you know? I got a deal for you. You want to hear it? I don't feel like I got much to trade right now, doll. You pick up the coroner's report, drop the tapes off at home, and come back around 9 o'clock. And maybe we'll use that blanket just to keep us warm. You're just saying that so I'll get out of here and let Manny and the monkeys go back to mauling you. No, no, I'm not. Don't tell me you're really serious this time. Because I don't have the heart for bait and switch today. So I'm a sucker for chivalry, even if it is misplaced. Kim, yeah, I'm serious. Amazing. I don't feel the least bit centered. Maybe not, Murph, but... Uh... You've come a long way back off the edge. Say, bud, you wouldn't know where I could find a Dr. Phelps around here, would you? It's Phillips, and you found me. Who are you? Murphy, Douglas P. But the, your secretary didn't say you were with a patient, so... No, no, he's, uh, he's all research now. Long past being offended. What can I do for you? Well, uh, being Mrs. Medford's sawbones, I figured you'd have a copy of that autopsy report. You with the police? No, nah, insurance company. Got a stuff the file full of something for them to mark it closed, you know. Actually, I was more than Cynthia's doctor. She was a close friend. Well, not that it means much coming from me, but I'm sorry. I spoke to the coroner. I asked him to double-check every detail before issuing the final report. Oh, don't tell me you suspect foul play. My life's tough enough with that kind of news. I was treating Cynthia with Trivericol for high blood pressure. And for her heart to fail that way is just not pathological. I also warned her about engaging in some of these religious exercises. So I take it you didn't see eye to eye with the husband. Not that there are many who would. What husband? Cynthia wasn't married. Well, not in the pathological sense, but she and that derma fella had tied the big knot a few months back to keep his green card from going pink, I think. I see. I wasn't aware. Yeah, and unless I trip over something big enough to wake up the DA, we'll just send him the check. That's probably best anyway. Yes, I suppose. But, uh... Thanks a lot, Doc. You've been a real pal. Wait a minute. Don't you want to hear what happened the night she died? Well, if you insist, what happened? Well, I got a call from Andrea telling me she thought Cynthia had suddenly taken a turn for the worse. When I got there, she was already having convulsions. I quickly gave her an injection to try and stop them, but by the time I could get her to the hospital, she was gone. What kind of an injection did you give her? Well, still doesn't sound like DA material to me, but thanks for trying, Doc. Please. Murph, you call that an interview? Yeah, I know, Kimmy. You're sitting there thinking, what happened to all those other questions I could have asked? Well, you only got yourself to blame for it this time. How do you figure that, Murph? Because since that picture session, you're all I've been able to think about. You're all I've wanted to think about. Mine hasn't exactly been a life littered with high spots, but the fact is you're more than half the reason I have the courage to get up every morning. And if you weren't such a knockout, I'd love you for that alone. Even with the bamboo curtain, you're still the best damn thing that's ever happened to me. Just don't ask me to repeat this in person. That way I can go on pretending that I really got a shot with you. Okay? Okay, Mom.
Rocco's. If it's a wallet you're after, you're welcome to all but the pictures. But I got a, a date tonight that just won't quit. And if this is business related, I'm going to be madder than a snake with a snout full. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance we could save the explanation until after we made love? Damn you, Murphy. And damn me forever believing it in the first place. God, I should have known this would happen. Okay, so the flowers got a little crushed, but it's not what you think. Who needs to think? It's all there in 3D. You're a bum. Oh, my mother tried to warn me about white men. Believe me, doll, this was all business. Oh, I'll just bet it was. Yeah, let me guess. You stopped to celebrate my fall by tossing back a few of the boys, right? <laughs> then there's a few more. <laughs> then somebody throws a punch. I have not been drinking. Then the bay reached 90 proof and you decided to go for a swim. Either way, you're still drunk. I am not drunk. God, except it's a pride moment. You always a pride. But I'm still dumb enough to fall for that crap. Will you stop that and just listen to me? Two guys come out of nowhere, beat me like the parlor rug, and... <laughs> Save it for your next landlady, Murph. Because at 10 o'clock tonight, I'm looking for a new roommate. You can come back for your stuff when you're sober. For the last time, I am not drunk. What, are you going to prove it by hitting me? All right, Finucci. If it's proof you want, you got it. Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Tonight's passion may be history, but I'll be damned if you're going to spit on eight solid months of my walk on the straight and narrow. No, 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 Think of it as another job without the power tool. Oh, come on, Murph, Murph. I'm gonna stop this before it gets too weird for us. Never felt life. more normal in my life. Yo, police! What? No! What are you doing? What have you lost it? Oh, God! Police! Over here! Oh, Murph, no, don't! Ah! What uh, seems to be the problem, friend? There's no problem. I just want you to give me a breathalyzer test right here, right now. Come again? She says I'm drunk. I say I'm not. I want you to prove for once in my miserable life I'm telling the truth. Let's see now. It's past midnight. You're holding a half-dressed woman in the middle of the alley here. You yourself look like you've been hit by a train or two, and you want us to prove that you're not under the influence? If it's not too much trouble, yeah. Test you? Mister, you're lucky I don't shoot you. You hear that? A guy tries to stand up for his good name, and all he's gonna get these days is killed. The hell with it. She probably wouldn't have believed you anyway. Murphy. You all right, miss? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Then can I suggest you go back inside and we can all call it a night? Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy? Morning, Doc. I, I, I happen to be in the neighborhood. I thought I'd pick up that autopsy report. Uh, maybe borrow your men's room while I'm here, if you don't mind. Yes. Oh. 
Thanks, Doc. I owe you one. No problem. Are you sure you're all right? You look, uh... Terrible. Feel terrible, too. What a night. Got beat up. Had a fight with my girlfriend. You were beaten up? Professionally, and you know what that means. God, I hate it when this happens. Now, wait a minute. What does it mean? It means we got a case here. It means treachery, culprits, clues. It means I gotta go to work. Then you think Derva may have had something to do with Cynthia's death? The beneficiaries usually get my vote on that. That's what I was afraid of. I never should have let her get so involved with him. Yeah, but heart failure. I mean, you must know about that territory real good. How does the guy pull that off? Oh, men with Derva's training have been known to bring their hearts to a complete stop, Mr. Murphy. Come to think of it, he did say something about having her on special exercises. But then, he didn't seem all that interested in getting the money either. Well, that temple or ashram he has downtown doesn't run on love alone. Boy, murder's bad enough, but murder by booga booga yin yang. I gotta get out of this racket. Adam. Yes, I know. I... Uh, look, I'm in a meeting right now, Ramos. Uh, that's all right, Doc. I, I, I got to pull out anyway. Yeah, hold on. But don't beat yourself up, Doc. Whoever put the whammy on her will get his all right. Look, if there's anything more I can do to help. You know, I knew a bookie once named Ramos. Raging Ramos, we called him. I think he had me beat up once, too. Must be what made me think of him. Mary Madal Karo Koi Aage Mind Nut Lya Upstairs I want to use a room upstairs. No, no. I give you money. You understand money? Alarm. Night. Robbers. No, 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 no. Money. No, take money. Give money for room upstairs across Music Academy. No, Mari, no, me, no. What's the matter, Mur? Can't get the woman to understand, huh? Thought I had the knack, but it's gone now. Maybe the shock was just too much for her. So much for the faith people used to have in each other. A few past disasters can do that to a woman. As far as I know, this is the first time I ever tried to rob this woman, and she can't handle one entendre, much less two. So why don't you just cut to the chase and tell me what you're doing here? See you. Help. Apologize. Robbers. Will, will you stop with the robbers no, no, here? No, no, Hold no, my no, wallet no, if it'll make you feel no, better. No, no, no. That always seems to work for you. Look, Murph, I don't blame you for being steamed, all right? I think last night my hot top Fanucci got the best of my little Miss mama -san. You wrong about me? Yeah, and, and willing to cop to it. In a word, why? Well, in a few more, because after you left, I realized that you were more upset that I called you drunk than that we weren't going to end up frolicking in the futons. I was? Yeah, it's a first by my memory, which means one of us turned a corner last night, and I think it was you. Oh, it's bound to happen sooner or later, but I'm glad there was a witness for a change. Well, just tell me when to testify. Right now, I'd rather you spoke Hindi or Urdu or some dialect in Dira Gandhi you can get a handle on. Mm, sorry, right continent, wrong language. But I did some work on the case, Murph, and I even came across a hot flash on the whirling Durva for you. Uh, that's just Durva to his friends, but what'd you get? Well, this monk's got spunk to spare. And if a brunette in a size six sarong sounds familiar to you, then his celibacy story is showing just a little too much skin. And Andrea seems so centered. You sure about this? Do binoculars lie? So maybe Mrs. Medford finds out and tells the old herb to take a powder on the real train for a change. So I'm learning. So, trying to drop the net on the dallying derva? Or did you want to shop for dinner while we're here? I'll take your curry over hers every chance I get. Wallet. Wallet. I go now. Come back tomorrow. Understand? People ask me why I drink. Drink. Drink.
sure you don't mind me coming along? And miss a whiff of all that free-floating apology you're wearing tonight? Murph, look, the door's open. Never a good sign. Now I mind you coming along. Why, because there might be trouble? Because without you here, I could leave with my fearless image intact. No chance of that now. God, I hope I don't have to hit anybody. enough juice to kill us all. Then maybe we should call the police. Police! Anybody hope? We got a disturbance call at this address. I know there's a line for this, but I ain't got it. Me neither. Ball's in your court. You're under arrest. There's a closer for you. Hey, don't go away mad, Wes. You think I went looking for the chips to fall this way? Don't ask me about that, or about your bail. What about our bail? I was able to get the company to float you alone for a week. But after that, you'll have to carry your own paper. One week? Wes, you know we don't have that kind of money. And how are we supposed to clear ourselves if we're locked in the jug awaiting trial? This is beginning to have the ring of serious jeopardy here. I gave it my best shot, but even if you catch Andrea and beat the rep, the company's looking to eat the big one on this policy. Oh, yeah, they're not in a lending mood. But what about my long history of getting results? What can I tell you? Companies don't have memories. <laughs> I'll give him something to remember. Look, 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 look. You hate hitting, remember? I'm rethinking that. We're looking at 10 to life for keeping money in their pockets, and they say let them eat lint. No, I never said that. Yeah. Miss Minucci, please. Can... It's nice that you got a boiling point in the job file here, okay? But an Irish fist is not the answer, Murph. It's been a rough week. I thought the release might do me good. A hot shower would be less complicated. Right, and while you're at it, you might consider taking the suit in with you. What are you going to do? Just let me talk to him, okay? I'll try to finesse an extension on the bail. Okay. But if he so much as makes a remark about taking it out in trade with you... Murph, relax. It takes most of what Wes has got just to put his eyes on me. Right? Sure some piece of work. Just wait till I finish with the remodeling. You forgot your key, Fenucci. Mr. Murphy? In a manner of speaking. I didn't know where else to go. The temple's coming apart at the seams. Cynthia's place is crawling with cops. And when I heard you'd been arrested... Can I come in? Me a casa sua casa. I thought you were running away the last time I saw you. I mean, this isn't going to be one of those good twin, bad twin stories, is it? I didn't kill Derva, Mr. Murphy. Too bad, because considering the police are going to want either my hide or yours, I was sort of hoping you had. He was already dead when I got to Cynthia's. But if you're innocent, why not call the cops? I did. But when I heard someone coming down the hall, I knew they couldn't have gotten there that fast, so I ran. What about Mrs. Medford's death? You mean, wasn't that enough of a bummer? No. I mean, wasn't that murder? What? Come. You and Derva see a shortcut to two million dollars, and all it takes is enough pressure on Cynthia's delicate heart, and you're home free. Derva was the most enlightened being I have ever met. And he'd sooner suffer himself than let any harm come to Cynthia or anyone. If you really expect me to buy that, Andrea, I'm gonna have to know the real story between you and the Wizard of Arm. Oh. Oh. Well, 
Well, I've been sleeping with him for the last few months, if that's what you mean. But Cynthia knew that. It was her suggestion. It was? She understood that even a monk deserves to know the flesh as well as the spirit every now and then. Would you mind repeating that to my roommate when she comes back? Since I was already living there, well, it all seemed natural enough. The six o'clock news might read that as kinky, but that still leaves me with a big problem. What's that? I believe you. Which means somebody else killed Durva and maybe Cynthia. And when we got to the penthouse, there were no signs of forced entry, so whoever killed them must have been let in or had a key. Am I making any sense? I'll bite. And I'm not positive, but I think Cynthia gave Alden a key in case he stopped by and she was meditating, but... The dark. The dark. What motive? Mr. Hart is busy just now. Oh, Green, Green. Wes, wait, it's good news I've got. You're not gonna hit me? Ah, oh, we can't let a touch of temper come between us. Not when I got a decent shot at saving the company's two million, can we? Oh, huh. well, what do you got? Of course, maybe we should settle our differences about that bail loan first. Murphy? All right. See, you sent me out thinking it had to be the monk that sank Cynthia since he was first in line for the money. Yeah, so? So we knew that. But the original beneficiary, Phillips and his institute, didn't find out Cynthia married Durva until after she was dead. So he was expecting the payoff from her death, only to turn around and see it fall to the monk. And if Phillips is as desperate for bread as yours truly here, then he'd have to kill Durva, too, to keep the funds coming his way. Can we prove any of this? The man's a hard specialist, Wes. If anybody could have made a heart give way and cover his tracks, he'd be the guy. He never figured on killing Durva, so that was left to hang on whoever happened to be in the neighborhood. Once again, yours truly. Oh, no! Miss Fanucci! What about Fanucci? Harden, so help me if you laid a finger on her. D worse than that, I set her up to see Phillips. You did what? She was really trying to be helpful, and I needed him to fill out some preliminary documents in the file, so she said she'd take it to him on her way home. Wes, the man's already killed two people. If he even thinks there's a chance she could put any of this together... You know, what really gets me is how this Durva did such a perfect job of killing Cynthia. Why that? Well, you told Murph you had her on Trivericol for her blood pressure, right? But this autopsy report here doesn't show any in her system or any trace of the injection you gave her just before she died. So what do you make of it? Let me think now. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Now that you mention it, I was surprised that Mr. Murphy hadn't raised some of those questions. <laughs> yeah, well... Murphy doesn't exactly see insurance investigation as a calling. I gather. Now that you ask, perhaps it wasn't Trivericol I was giving Cynthia. Perhaps it was Phenadryl. Phenadryl? But that's a narcotic, isn't it? Yes, it is. Would you, uh, would you hold this rabbit for me? I, uh, always try to do this as gently as possible. Yeah, sure. <laughs> me asking you, why would you be giving Cynthia Phenadryl? I mean, couldn't she get addicted to that? Oh, yes, but I stopped it in time so that her withdrawal symptoms looked like severe heart palpitations. Wait, you wanted her to go into withdrawal? How else, then, could I inject her with a shot of insulin and stop her heart for good? Ah! <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
really sorry. It has to be this way. Thanks, Doc, but it's really not helping. I think I got it across, but it would help if they could come with you to see for themselves. Fine, fine. Let's just do it. It's almost time. That's my daughter, Katie, there. I knew she was going to start lessons, but the flute. Ted Koppel, later on Nightline, almost half of you believe the political polls are bad for the country. How do we know? We have a poll, and we'll focus on the polling controversy tonight. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, catch some of Hollywood's biggest names when they gather for an action-packed salute to the stars behind the stars. Join host Christopher Reeve for the world's greatest stunts. Friday, it's every newborn parent's nightmare, maternity ward kidnappers, they want your baby for their own. What you need to know to stop them on 2020.